Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Advanced Tactics Gold, the play by email multiplayer series. Uh, this is, I think we're really starting to get towards the end of this playthrough just because um, I think things are starting to tilt in our favor. We've completely eliminated Solgen as an industrial base. We've just been pounding it. So I would consider this, I'm going to call it for my own dramatic purposes, the Siege of Solgen. And uh, the siege will continue this turn. We'll hopefully even move into the outskirts. We do have a four-sided surround on this, so that's a pretty exposed element of the enemy front. And because of that, we'll try to take advantage. <laughs> now, in the off turn, I mean, the enemy's movements were mainly to push in the north, as we expected, and to fall back to defensive positions in the south. So absolutely nothing surprising. I'll just play through it here. I don't even remember what the order of things is, but okay, so moving in the south, then he did bombard and push through here. Um, and he's gonna move a lot of forces up. He's gonna push through hard with um, tanks. It's a very well def uh, defended front. So he actually did a follow-up attack, which um, was smart because my submachine guns didn't fare very well in the open. Just some bombardment, move back because I did threaten his artillery. He did um, respond as I expected to that. Uh, more bombardment along the front. Nothing, just nothing very surprising. One more bombardment. And I think we're now we're getting to the part where he should be moving in the south, or did he already? Yeah, there. So he's falling back. He knows he's outnumbered. and uh, Surprisingly, he's able to bring some decent forces to bear in the south. Uh, not that I'm worried about a counteroffensive or anything like that, but... He might be able to set up eventually at some defensive positions along this forest and the mountains here. This is such a hard area for me to breach because obviously I have to bring up engineers to get supply beyond this stream. And the mountains themselves are really hard to take. So so I think this will be kind of fun to push in the south because it's at my own leisure. I can choose when to move or whenever. Because uh, I'm not. I don't fear for a counterattack. Now, let's see what we want to do here. I know I want to build a road here. And I don't think we're going to build another road, road forward, but we will move these guys across. Okay, actually, I'm going to leave this guy. So we have some funny stuff that I want to get going. I want this guy to move as far forward as he can because he's going to move into the open. But I want, yes, I think this guy belongs here. And he also belongs as far forward as he can go, so that's fine. Um, so Now, how to deal with this? We want a guard unit here. And I don't know exactly what order to do this in. Well, let's start with the units in the back. Let's see how far they, they can get. Yeah, so if they can't get any further than that, then we'll move them just there. Okay, so how can these guys move? Mm -hmm. We might even just move all three of them into here. Like, where can this guy get to? Yeah, he can't get any further forward himself. So we'll do that. This, um, the Jeep will just put in the, I don't know, across the road, leave him on the road. I think I wanna connect this line. It doesn't really matter the supply that we have to go all the way around right now, I checked. Um, that's not a super big deal to me, but um, it will be nice to be able to move forces very quickly. So we're going to have our engineer move that way. He has the action engineering points to do it, and we have the raw to do it, so basically it's just going to create a quicker supply line, um, nice transitions along the front. It's, just gonna, it's also going to make things a little bit harder because I didn't move the road forward, but we can always do that. I mean, you can see that they already built a road forward kind of for us. I think they were expecting to defend a little bit forward, forward a little bit further forward, and that's not going to end up being the case. They're, uh, we're pushing back uh, probably a lot harder than they expected. That movement in the south, their decoy before they attacked in the north, was probably because they smelled weakness. And they probably didn't expect this counterattack. It's funny because you say these things, they're, they're very presumptuous, and they could be completely incorrect. You, you have absolutely no idea what exactly is going on in the mind of your human opponent, because, yeah, humans don't always behave rationally. So, And we don't know on what information um, he was operating anyway. 
All right, but I will go ahead and move this headquarters at least forward to here. Mm. Well, I guess we can start this from the top. I don't, um, looking forward, I think we'll attack this area and then possibly follow up an attack here because I think he has, we have pretty good reconnaissance here and I see that he has one serenite tank, but he has two that are really, or one more that is really low weak readiness. Excuse me. So I think that this is a good target of opportunity. Is uh, these, it's a really weak armory, even though it's in the urban, uh, it's in a city hex, so it's harder for my tanks to assault in. I think that we should have enough firepower to overwhelm. Um, they're pretty weak tanks. It's just two tank units, you know, it's, uh, relatively minor. So my goal will be to try to push into that as well. And that's why I'm calling this the Siege of, Siege of Sologen, because we won't be able to take it, but we're taking, you know, the non-industrial parts of the city. Not the ones that matter as much, but uh, certainly this is going to give us a real good vantage point from taking for actually assaulting into a Solgen, uh proper. Okay, uh, I was expecting to use the armored cars on this turn, but now I very much doubt we will be able to because there's no real... Uh, ability for us to attack into this forest. It's got an anti-tank, which already makes it really hard to defend, uh, to attack. But on top of that, um, it's in the forest. So I don't really think we'll do that. What we might do is just attack into this hex because I can bring up the artillery to expose it. That's number one. And uh, number two, it, it's just gonna flesh a another hole in their lines. So this is the, the weak point, obviously, along their lines. It's the open territory. So the problem is I don't know who can attack in. So we're, we're obviously moving these guys forward so they don't have any ability to attack after they move. Um, can any of these guys attack from down here? I don't think anybody can attack from here. We'll just have to do a one-to-one -one attack, which is fine if we get enough artillery. So let's just go ahead and do that right away. We don't need to bombard any of these units because I'm not worried about a counterattack. I'm really I'm not. So let's just go ahead and assault these guys with our two. Well, that was over very quick. Did kill nine units, which is surprising. And the rest of them are down to about half readiness. Yeah, I think that's sufficient for an attack. I think we'll conduct this attack even with my yellow infantry. I don't feel like using my machine guns to attack. I feel like they're better used to defend, so I'd like to move them in after. Can you attack? No. So yeah, this is the only unit that can attack with my armored car group. So, and you guys can't, and you guys can't either. Okay, so then I guess it's settled. We don't attack this turn. We just wait one more. So that's just the way it's going to have to be, which is fine. We can push up with these forces. So now everyone's kind of finally making their way to the front. Uh, let's see. You guys can move. Right, wait, can you get in here? Ah, fantastic. And you... Hmm. I guess you'll move here, because that's where everyone else is, just for fun. And I think let's put a little bit more pressure in this area, this gap right here. Because <clears throat> that's where I'm going to want to break through and push hard. And this is what I mean. They actually have, you know, not a terrible number of forces. This is uh, reasonable. Very reasonable. So so now I think we can begin stretching their line uh, out this way. I think we're in supply based on that road. Nope, this guy's slightly out of supply. That's okay. And you know, I might even move this unit one more forward. There's really no reason for him to be hanging back at all. There's no artillery in this area, so uh, yeah, that's we'll do that. Okay, we might as well get this attack down in the south, so I think I'll move this guy here. And we'll attack with the two artillery here, which are strongest. And then we'll follow it up with a third bombardment. 
Okay, well, that actually did a lot less than I thought it would. But we are lowering entrenchment. Let's hope we can get a little bit more out of this. I mean, this was a ex much worse than I was expecting. I was expecting to do some kind of damage to their anti-tanks. It doesn't look like I've done any damage. <clears throat> Which is the, the real problem here, that we are assaulting into a urban area. The city hexes are very easy to defend from tanks to begin with. And this is a pretty strong unit anyway. Okay, but that's fine. We do have guard units we can bring up for this, so let's go ahead and do that. You, you haven't gotten any use yet, so let's let's give them some use, right? Now let's see where this attack can be. Okay, some machine guns will do well. All these guys, and I think we want one more unit in the south to attack. We don't have any guard units. So you can attack. Or maybe you can move down and attack. I think that that's fine. Why don't we do that? Okay. Let's grab these two, these two, these two, and that. And it's a perfect, the perfect number. Nice concentric bonus. Um, I'm a little nervous about the fate of my tanks, but, you know, we just got to go for it, so... Go ahead and engage. Watching, 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 watching. Yes! Wow, okay, very good. So we ended up actually killing all of their anti-tanks. We didn't lose a single tank ourselves. We probably, this unit, uh, the ninth, our ninth armor just, uh, extremely good performance, extremely good performance. Doesn't look like their tanks took a hit at all. Seventh armor took some a little bit more, and the first armor, had to retreat, and they also have a guy who's looks like he was very close to being destroyed. A tank that took heavy damage. So this must be the one that took heavy damage. You can see the readiness is extremely low. This one's decent, and this one's in really good shape. And he can actually push on an attack. That's interesting. And he's in he's actually in really good shape. That's the, the ninth, right? Yeah. Well, let's move them in, because I know that that's going to happen. Give us a better idea of what we can do, too. Let's move this artillery forward along the road. And these guys will move in as well. We don't have any... Do we have any anti-tank? Not nearby, at least. I don't know where they are. Oh, they're down here. Well, we don't need them down... Oh, yeah, they are actually defending against this armor. Okay, that's good. So the question is, between these two hexes... Because this one now has... Okay, this is extremely weak armor. I think we have to attack the city. I was planning originally to attack here because this is a pretty weak unit as well. But this is really low weak armor. The lower organized they are, the more likely they are to, you know, surrender or, you know, just be destroyed by an errant hit. And these guys are also really low. So let's try to get an, an attack on these guys. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to bombard here just to, like, finalize my decision to go there. Okay. Yeah, that, that was good, actually. They didn't have very good readiness to begin with, but now they're pretty disorganized. Didn't kill that many, though. Man, what exactly did we do? Just weaken on infantry. Okay, well, that's not too surprising. Hmm. I'm really debating what to do here. I mean, we have really good armor right here as well. We can just attack in with, like, a ton of armor. Let's leave this one, because he is a little bit disorganized from that. Yeah, I don't like attacking with... 
it's not enough infantry for me. I'd prefer to attack him with more infantry. Hmm, but... Is there any way we can get three sides? We'd have to attack here. Which will give them a turn to recover. I'd rather not give them that return to recover, because these guys just fared so well in the first attack. We, we gotta take the opportunity to try to eliminate them. I, I, I think... Okay. I'm gonna do something else, actually. We only need two guys to bombard Solgen. So I'm going to use one more artillery to further bombard this hex that I'm thinking about attacking. Their readiness is so low, yeah. I mean, the, the city is so low production-wise, it was at 450, so we knocked it out. We didn't really do anything else, but we did knock it out. So that's the important thing. Just keep them low on readiness and uh, keep the city from producing anything, which we have a really solid lock on. But now I can move this um, artillery south, and we can get yet another bombardment on. I just hope this does a little bit more to convince me attacking here is the right thing. Okay, well, hmm. Yeah, I, okay, so one thing to, is that we're way ahead in terms of armor. I mean, already this turn we've killed two tanks and we didn't lose any, and we killed three anti-tank. Okay, yeah, we're, we're way ahead, so let's just, let's push the advantage, even if we take a few losses. I think this is still going to be the right move. I'm just wondering whether to engage with another force. Because this will absorb... I'm going to do it. We'll absorb a few more casualties this way. So let's do it. Okay, and oh, we actually won. Oh, okay, so let's see what well, we killed, though. That's the important thing. We didn't lose a tank. Oh, amazing. And actually, the guys who survived, they look like they're in good shape, too. That's good. And we killed two, three, oh my gosh, we killed three more armor. So the, wow, I, I mean, in my head, I was thinking we could just attack in there. That was a, what I was considering from the beginning. One of these two hexes to put them pressure even further on, Sologen. I don't, I don't know if I actually expected to take it, because <laughs> I knew my guys would be already kind of out of time, out of action points for the month, uh, having attacked here. But we actually did it. Well, it would be foolish not to defend this area, so let's see if we can't get any guard units to move in. Probably we can't. <laughs> what about you? Yeah. So we actually cannot move any guard units in. They will all have to wait. Even though these guys are a little bit lower on readiness, I'm going to move in just because, you know, huge bonus. You get the huge bonus for doing that. Okay, and we have plenty of armor who can move in here, so if you did the attack... Go, okay, let's see. I think we still move in with these guys. And I'm not too worried about this hex, because it'd be a one-to-one -one assault. And it, it would make them very vulnerable next turn if they decide to do it. Let's get these um, really strong machine guns in. Yeah, we have plenty of units back here, too. I'm going to move this machine gun south, actually, because I, I think what I want to do is attack into this forest next turn. So I'd like to get a whole bunch of units ready. Because that doesn't have any armor, so if we just throw enough infantry at it, it should be okay. And probably we cycle this guy out for a moment. Okay, he can move in there because he can't do anything else. Move this guy in here, cycle this guy. Oh, he has to move in as well. Oh, that's fine. And he can move in here. Fantastic. Okay, good. That's a pretty strong defense. Mortars, armor. Uh, it is surrounded on four sides, which isn't good, but... Did 
Did I attack with these guys? I did. I'm gonna have them move in, actually. And let's move this guy forward. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. That's good. Okay, three light tanks. Do I trust this or where does this guy go? Here or here? Here would be to stage him for the offensive next turn. Actually, we have plenty of armor there, so let's go here. <clears throat> okay, yeah, so now we're extremely well defended. And we'll leave these guys in the back just because they're a little bit low on organization. And we have plenty of guys who can actually move forward now. I don't think my Jeep's going to be much use here anymore. We have a Jeep already in the north to kind of scout that. But it could be useful more in the south here, just to get some better information. Can't move again in order... I don't want him on the front though, so we'll... We'll wait to move him next turn. Okay, so that's everything in the south, I think. Um, I'll do some bombardment here, definitely, you know, just to keep suppressing the masses. Yeah, I'm going to continue to bombard this one pretty tough. It's actually, I mean, well, I was going to say it's actually vulnerable to an attack, from infantry, but how vulnerable is an attack for, for uh, how vulnerable from an attack from infantry is a city hex with machine guns and submachine guns? Yeah, probably not really. I can only get a two. I can only attack from two fronts, so unlikely that I'll be able to succeed there. We'll probably just take really massive casualties. I think I'd rather hold off. Okay, and I think we're also going to attack over here. It looks like we have the opportunity to actually smash this guy. So I think we'll just do the attack with two and leave one to bombard this set, uh, the forest just to pin them. And this looks like it's more than enough. That was brutal. Yeah, that was certainly enough. We're just slogging through. I, this is just a slow push now because things are in our control. Excuse me. Let's do that. So we don't need to rush, which is why I called last episode the beginning of the end because we're not in a huge hurry anymore. Now let's go ahead and push my armored car and my tank forward. I don't think, from what I remember, nobody else is able to attack. Yeah. So let's do this attack just with these two units. And I mean, honestly, the, these units are so weak, both to readiness of almost 10, that armored units are gonna just destroy them. Hopefully we don't take too many losses. That's what I was hoping. Yeah, otherwise we just smashed them. Five to one victory ratio. And what I wanna do here, because they do have a tank unit, only one light tank, that doesn't make sense. Uh, maybe my reconnaissance isn't high enough. Let me get this engineer to Rebuild our bridge. Okay, now, how much does this take? 40. So they only have two standard light tanks in there. That surprises me. I thought this would be a full, like a fully enforced armor division, which for him I think is four. Well, can we get this? Yes, okay. Now this is extremely well defended. We also probably want to throw a machine gun group in there, like this. Okay, very good. And once again, we'll be uh, we'll be preparing to breach through. Let's get this guy to be a machine gun defense. And I don't see any reason why not to move this guy forward one. And we'll just start putting a whole bunch of these guys on the doorstep to move across next turn. We'll continue to suppress in the north. And now this leads us to the last thing we really need to do, um, which is the north. 
Excuse me real fast. <coughs> so how do we react to this breach? It's a good question. We're going to want infantry to come here to help out. And we'll probably do a, a complete fallback to these positions. Well, I'm going to leave this guy for now. Uh, I think He might end up here, but probably he'll move here. If they try to move around me, I'm okay with that. Then we just pin them in the north. So probably I'll move him down, but let's see how things look. Um, we need to box this group in, so let's move this guy over here. We want to support up here as much as possible, but we can't. So we can't get those guys. It takes 120 to move there. Okay. Well, let's defend very heavily here then. And probably do like something like this, like this, and like this. Let's swap these guys so that this guy can move forward. And this guy can move here. Look, this is a very well defended area. Um, this is vulnerable to an attack, but they're going to have to do it against well entrenched submachine guns. We have anti tank here, so that's a good start. I'm just going to put these guys into the forest, just run them in. Because they need to recover for a turn anyway. And I don't think, I didn't look, but could they have gotten here? I actually don't remember now, so I made a small mistake just by not looking. Let's put machine guns to help defend our tanks. And that's a really solid defensive line. So we'll do this. It, it, it looks like it'll come down to them attacking here with tanks to push forward. Which would be fine. They could also move um, their engineer and build a road this way. And probably get their tanks to here, or maybe even to my oil. Okay, in order to prevent such a happenstance. Let's get my armor to protect my oil. And I think I have enough, so let's get this guy up here. And I have enough, I think, for one more armor division for my Supreme Headquarters. So there's the three tanks and the 10 rifles. Yeah, they're, they're in really good shape too. They don't have any experience. We need to try to keep them off the front for as long as possible. But they'll be a deterrent for the time being, at least. I, I'm just trying to make sure we keep um, zone of control pressure everywhere. So zone of control pressure from this unit extends here, then from this unit extends here. So uh, we just keep them from being able to move freely. <laughs> Okay, all right, well, that's probably everything we need to do for this episode. I know this is a really exposed unit, but I'm not, I'm just not going to attack. All I need to do is keep shoring up defenses here, keeping, slowing them down, giving my defenses time to build up. That's really all I need to do, which I can, I mean, since I'm reinforcing from my main headquarters, which is so close by, we have plenty of time to play it slow, just defend. Let them keep inching forward. Even if they just take two hexes every month, every turn, um, a turn is a month, they won't make it very far very fast. All the while, we're pushing on Sologen, and, I mean, indirectly, we're, we're pushing towards Castle. It's going to take a long time for me to make um, any kind of serious gains in the south, but I think that there's no real way for them to stop me from making continuous gains. So maybe I won't be pushing three hexes per turn. Maybe I'll also be only going two or even just one hex per turn. But I, I think I stand a much better chance of heading them off in some favorable terrain eventually. Particularly, I mean, this would have been the ideal to defend here already, but they caught me a little bit off guard. So we'll try to do make do with the best we can with um, some anti-tank stuff. Okay, so we pushed across. This unit is so weak, I, I'd almost consider attacking it. The readiness is extremely low, but then again, I've been bombarded, so my readiness isn't perfect either. I think I'll hold off. This artillery is gonna have to react by bombarding this unit, I think. 
So let's actually split up my forces here a little bit. Let's grab... I'm gonna grab this unit and 2730. This unit and move them south a little bit just to prepare for possibly attacking across, pushing in to help out there. Hmm, and we have plenty of infantry here whose readiness has been given enough time to recover as well. So let me move this really good unit in here. And I mean, I'm thinking eventually we should move across here and we can get a three-sided attack on this unit. We have artillery already in place. Seems like a good idea. We can even get this um, mortar to move in as well. So the one way, instead of leaving this guy, he was just gonna be reserved, but I don't think they're crossing. So let's move him right there. Which sets me up pretty well to attack. Well, we can actually, yeah, we can actually move across this turn. And it's not even out of supply. Wow, that's, I, I didn't know that. That's amazing. In fact, we can move a, a, a big defensive force across. Okay, this is very good. Now I do want to move more in to protect here. Wow, this is great. We're in very good shape. We're actually starting to counter push in the north. And the reason I wanna do this is just to give this whole clump of forces more to worry about. The moment they stop their forward momentum, that's it. I think the analogy of this being the Battle of the Bulge is a really good one. The moment that we stopped the Germans, they didn't have the um, production capabilities or, you know, I mean, that's, that's a pretty macro view of the situation. They just didn't have the reinforcements to be able to keep pushing. They had to, what, if they wanted to break, they had to do it immediately and they had to keep pushing. Now part of the Battle of the Bulge was decided by the lack of air power in the beginning and eventually the return of air power when the weather cleared up a bit. But we don't have that kind of problem here. It's more just, do you have the forces to defend or do you have the forces to keep pushing? And we have the momentum on our side. So I guess that's it for this episode then. I'll go ahead and rearrange my forces off camera like I always do, but there's not too much that needs to be done. Maybe I'll push forward here again just to give us a better... Yeah, I was, I'll certainly do that. I need to move some forces in here. Some forces that aren't horribly depleted. <laughs> so maybe... Ah, well... One force? <laughs> Can move one guy? Is that the only one who's in good shape here? Oh, yeah, two mortars. <laughs> I can move two mortars in here. Well, that's good. Mortars do well across streams. But I don't think that'll, that'll be a bombardment target for them. They have so many other choices about where to bombard. But this sets me up well to begin attacking and counterattacking in. And if they don't, if they aren't able to push me off here and they aren't able to defend, then Landsberg is my next target, clearly. So, anyways, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the rest of the series as we keep pushing on. Until then, take care.